everybody and welcome to Witchy Wednesday with Seaside Shadows. It's Courtney here. You may know me as a spirit medium and a ghost tour guide and I will be your witch today. We hopefully met last week and if you didn't get a chance you can still tune in uh, where we were creating something called Black Salt. And before I introduce you to today's segment, I just wanted to show everyone really quick um, what we produced last week, and we've been making some deliveries of it uh, with black salt. Uh, it's kind of still doing its thing, um, getting more powerful by the day, but what it does is it breaks hexes and bad energy, and you can sprinkle it at your doorsteps, or if you've had a bad day, you can even just put a little between your hands and sort of bring some good energy into your life. So we have our black salt here and the black salt seasoned the cauldron uh, so that that is pure for all of the things that we're going to be making. And you see the cauldron right over our fire here in Buddhist Connecticut. So today I'm really excited uh, because we have two segments, uh, two parts to this segment today. Uh, we're going to be making a healing potion and I'm also going to show you a little bit about cauldron brews in general. Uh, so for a healing potion is what we're going to start with. And the healing potion is in honor of the goddess, uh, princess of Egypt. Uh, she was also known and a queen at varying times. And her name is Isis. And if you're not familiar with her, you may be familiar with her son Horus and uh, have heard of him in varying stories. And so I wanna chat with you a little bit about her and why her magic is so important uh, to the healing that we are going to do today and what we are creating today. So Isis was not someone who expected to be a woman that was called into doing amazing things. Uh, her husband, he was king of Egypt However, oh, I'm being told to take my foot down by my husband. Sorry, everybody. Her husband uh, was king of Egypt and he, of course, had all of the burden upon him and she wanted to focus on being a devoted wife. But her husband had a very jealous brother who wanted to be king of Egypt rather than his brother, of course. So what does he do? Well, in grand Egypt tradition and excuse the wind, it's pretty windy here in Connecticut today, and brisk for April. But in pure Egypt tradition, her husband's brother comes and captures him and puts him inside a coffin. And he's there for days, but Isis is not going to let her husband go down like this. And she goes and she retrieves the coffin. When she brings the coffin home with her husband, who is still alive for all intents and purposes, the brother finds him again. This evil brother Seth is his name and he butchers him into pieces. So what does Isis do next? Well, legend states that she turns into a bird and that she flies into the air and she gathers all the pieces that she can find of her husband. She's not able to find all of them, but using magic that she herself didn't even know she was so capable of having, puts her husband together again and makes him whole. The problem is this. He's no longer alive nor dead, but he's extremely powerful. And being whole with his power, he has to do something. And he becomes the king of the dead or the king of the underworld. And she finds out that she is pregnant at this time. And she has to raise a child on her own that is now to take the throne. And the name Isis actually means the throne. So she raises her son Horus and she protects him from the awful family that wanted to do away with him. And finally, when Horace grows up, he's able to kill the evil uncle. But what's funny is I told you a few of the names going through and, and they are so important to Egyptian lore, which has influenced lore across the world, even into modern Western tradition. But I wanted to focus on what she did during that entire time. Even though at first glance, she appears to be a woman who would just contentedly stay at home or take care of her family. If that's what she had to do, that's what she would have done. But life doesn't always throw us those cards and there are wild cards and there are things beyond our control and people beyond our control. But no matter what bad thing happened, she took control and transformed things with magic and with love so that her family was first and she transformed her husband twice. She rescued her son 
and she has now become worshipped in Egypt. There are temples built to her uh, throughout the country and throughout the world. We see statues of her uh, today. And she's celebrated for her magic of transformation, but she's most gone to as a goddess of healing, uh, who's there for the sick and the dying. And she is also has a closer relationship with those who have passed. I think, you know, there's a lot going on and we all have so much in our minds that we're focusing on with our own magic and intentions. And we want to sort of channel Isis in that way, that power over our own life, but especially over our own health. We are going through some pretty rough weeks um, with the pandemic in the world right now, and lots of people are sick and, and, and lots of people are dying, and we could use a little healing in our own lives, at least in the little bit that we can control. And I think today is a perfect day to honor Isis. It is also the new moon where it is time to set new energy. We want to set intensive healing so that we can make some progress together. It is also Earth Day. So it's perfect that Isis's uh, formulas for healing involve lots of herbs from the earth that are perfect for us. So together we're going to make a healing potion uh, called the Isis Healing. Now, What's interesting about this is that it's not something that will be immediately ready at the end of this segment, but it will be mostly ready. And I made one earlier today because it does have to sit out in the sun once we put the concoction together. So I made one earlier today that I will show you at the end what it looks like and the one we're making together virtually will effectively look the same. And if you wanna try this at home, you absolutely can. This is something that uh, is great for beginners and we can all channel this powerful lady. The first thing that is suggested for this, blue being a sign of purity and clarity, is that you make your healing potion in a blue uh, jar. And I just have a blue mason jar here, nothing terribly fancy, but it's something that is great for this particular potion today. And the first ingredient is something that you can have, fresh water. Now you can have fresh water like we got from the cauldron before by the river. Uh, you can have fresh water straight from your tap, whatever fresh means to you. We here at Seaside Shadows and on Witchy Wednesday love to use our cauldron that we already cleansed with black salt and cleansed in the river. So we've been transforming our regular tap water into what we consider to be even more cleansed water for this particular segment and it's been over the fire transforming fire and water to friends and enemies <laughs> so we have a little bit of water here we're going to need a little bit more i like a little bit of extra magic in everything we do and what i have in this jar is full moon water it was bottled under the full moon and it's important that we charge everything we do and so this was bottled under the full moon with water from the river and we're going to pour a little bit of that in with the water too. So for anyone just tuning in, we're mixing our cauldron water with full moon water in a blue jar. That's all you've missed so far, but full moon water isn't a requirement, but I always encourage people to go harvest some on the full moon. And I'll remind you when that comes up in a couple weeks, right now we're on the new moon, setting new intents. So we have our water, we have our magic water. So now it's time to talk about the herbs that uh, we put in here. There's only four, but they are extremely powerful. And we've been making sure to set the intent all day with the herbs that we are going to use for this. And so what the first herb that we're going to use is honestly my favorite and it's sage. Um, but it's more helpful if you can grind your uh, herbs for this particular potion, most of them have to be pretty well ground. Now, we do have some fresh sage here. I want to give a shout out to our local garden store who just delivers the most beautiful sage, purple and green sage. Um, they're called Balax and they bring it right to your door, uh, but you can also plant your own. Sage is wonderful, by the way. If um, you can't find Lysol anywhere or you're worried that it is bad for your pets, did you know that burning sage in your house can kill 97% of bacteria causing germs? So sage is wonderful. So we're gonna put some sage leaves into here, white and purple. And I have some pre-ground sage. Um, and if that's the best that you can find for a while, that's absolutely fine as well. And I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of that in here. 
Now you can grind your herbs one by one. I like kind of merging them together early on. Uh, so right here, we just have some sage leaves and some sage. I could start grinding and making sure they're all, all ground up now. But what I'm going to do is actually add the other elements that we are going to be putting in here uh, first and foremost. The next thing, and it's going to smell a little bit funky when you're making it. Some things smell great when you're making it. Um, healing potion takes some time to get a nicer smell. Um, so the next thing that we're going to mix in with our sage is going to be uh, some cinnamon. So I like to use as much pure cinnamon that I myself will grind. If you're like me and you can't break cinnamon sticks well, find the little ones. <laughs> That's what I do. Or find someone strong who can help you break the bigger ones. And I love, love cinnamon. So I'm going to try to put a little bit extra in there and again i do have some that's already ground and we're going to sprinkle that in there so at least the cinnamon will mask any other smells that we don't love during the process of making this um my goodness what am i even doing wrong lids on these jars so we have the cinnamon we have the sage we have the water in the jar what's next um what's next for this is a little bit of time um you don't have to use too much of it but I do think that there's a lovely power to it. And we right here has some lovely uh, French thyme that we're putting into these. Um, you can grow this, you can get it delivered, you can buy it at the store. Uh, so that's another great thing to put in here with your mortar and pestle. And if you don't have a mortar and pestle, it's okay to uh, get creative with some other things. That's no worries. The next thing, rosemary. It's your final ingredient. Um, same thing, you can grow, you can buy at the store. Um, I like it a little bit dried out. I think it's the thing that smells a little bit the funkiest when you mix it in with everything else, but it's also very, very powerful. Um, and it brings a lot of good energy to you and it is important for that healing. So we have our four ingredients in the mortar and pestle. And see that there? And we're going to grind them up. <laughs> which takes a little bit of strength. So I'm gonna have you bear with me. I got to do the other one um, at a table that was a little bit more high. So a little bit better for, uh, for me doing the witchy thing inside, but hopefully you can see. And um, if anyone says anything to you, you know, you're just channeling your inner kitchen, which it's actually really fun to uh, kind of do this together. You can exert any, bad energy because you have the black salt and you have all the cleansing and you can really get some good energy and it's important when you're doing this that you're charging it with good thoughts thoughts of healing uh things of that nature and so we're just really thinking it's the new moon people are going to get better we want to stay healthy we want to be a support system for each other and we want to channel the powerful people um, and legends that have brought us to this point and have helped us to do that with each other. So we have this pretty well, it's not by any intents and purpose perfect, pretty well uh, ground. So I'm just going to take it and put it right in my water that I already had. Now, I feel like um, a little bit more of the pre-ground ingredients is absolutely fine um, to put that in. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit more sage. I never get enough of it. And um, I think we had plenty of cinnamon. I put a little bit extra on that. And then what we're going to do is very simple. We're going to put the lid back on, seal it tight. and leave it in the sun. Now we're doing this at sunset. Um, I did this one early in the day. So here's what's next. We leave this in the sun. Right now you can see the water is clear. Some herbs sit on top, some herbs sit on bottom. It may steep even without the sun, but you want the power of the sun, that sort of freshness of the day to really charge this. So if you make it in the evening, put it out the next morning and let it charge until sunset. That's what I'm going to do with this one. And then if the herbs have all kind of really soaked into the water and it's not clear, it's a different color, 
then your healing concoction here is done. This has been sitting out all day and you can really see the difference here with what we are just made and what's been sitting in the sun. There's one small difference with this one is at the very end, I put a few full sprigs of thyme and rosemary. It was just something I felt I wanted to do with this one. Uh, you are your own witch. You have your own power. You know what you're feeling from your herbs. The one I did with you, I really felt more strongly about putting more sage. So you'll know what healing element will make it best, what people you're thinking of and who you're thinking of using it for. So what do you use it for? A lot of people put it in their bathtub or something of that nature, uh, just a little bit. You don't have to bathe in the whole thing, but put a little bit in to promote healing in your body and make sure you have healing thoughts. But say you don't have a bath, you're not a bath person. Um, I'm Catholic, so I liken it to uh, anointing with holy water. You can put a little bit here. I already make the cross. You shouldn't. It's not holy water. But you can just put a little bit on your head, a little bit on your hands, whatever makes you feel good. Um, and, and you just channel in the powers that you believe in um, and what's important to you. That's what makes your witch magic special. That's what makes this healing. Um, we will be sure to bottle small jars of this, um, the one that I made earlier and the one that we're making together. And I will definitely be posting, if you don't have the ingredients, you don't wanna make it, I'll be posting so you can buy some um, Isis healing potion. Uh, she, again, is someone that I consider this kind of divine feminine, but her healing can be used uh, for the divine masculine as she used it so often for her husband. Um, so mothers, wives, sisters, um, if you want to use this for yourself and the people you love, this is really great. And to the men watching, it's great for you too. She's one powerful lady. So we have our Isis healing potion. Uh, we have the black salt from last week, but I told you that there's one more thing that I was going to show you guys today. And it's something I just started before I started talking to you. I'll show you close up, it's lovely. We see some different herbs in here and we notice that it's not really moving. So what is this liquid in here? What is different? What this is is called cauldron brew. And I started it just today. Cauldron brew actually takes 13 days to fully become what it's meant to become. And it's used for rituals. Uh, this is something that will be done um, close to Beltane. So we're hoping that it'll be pretty well done by then so we can use it for any Beltane rituals next week. Um, so get a start now and, and hopefully you'll have it. But you wanna always throw a little dash in your cauldron or before you even have a fire or celebrate any rituals on these festival days where we start new seasons, new beginnings. You want to have a cauldron brew. It's kind of the ultimate magic to keep in your house and it never goes bad. And it smells really great even when you're making it. So what is cauldron brew and how can we make it together? So I'm gonna move our black salt over here so that we have a fresh jar to uh, start with. And unlike with the healing potion, we're not going to put the liquid in first. We're going to put the herbs in first. Uh, similarly, it's four herbs. Uh, the first one, and this is my favorite herb. It's a great anti-inflammatory, it's calming, it's a nice antidepressant. Uh, my favorite herb is lavender, and you don't need much of it to go a long way, and it smells beautiful. So you put a little lavender uh, in your mason jar. And for anyone who knows me personally, or who's going to know me, you may know I'm an Outlander fan, and I know lavender is associated with a villain, but lavender is really wonderful and herbal for the witches, so we have to get with that. Um, and the lavender leaves are just as powerful. As long as you leave lavender leaves on the bottom of your roots, it will grow back. So we've got a lavender flower and lavender leaves in here. The next thing, my other favorite thing, is naturally sage. That's, have you noticed something different? I didn't put this in my mortar and pestle. This one involves putting the water in first and grinding. This one involves herbs first, but putting them in. So I'm going to put some of the purple sage, some of the green sage. Ignore some winter here while I'm trying to do this channel spring. So we have the sage leaves and just one more purple. I can't help it. I love it so much. So we have our lavender and we have our sage. What's next? We have a little bit of mint. 
mint will smell really fresh and smell really nice. And that's something that you definitely want to put in here. And I lied to you, there's five ingredients in this one, not four. You're gonna to wanna to put in a little rosemary again, though not too much. And optional, but still something I love, is the thyme again. You are not gonna use the cinnamon for this one. And the sage is again optional on this one too. So sage and thyme is optional. Those are things that I think are great for the cauldron brew and that really kind of increase its power. So we have them in here, we have the full leaves. What's next? What's the next powerful step? Um, the liquid, the liquid that's not changing color. That's because for cauldron brew to sort of maintain its power and become indestructible, uh, we want to use alcohol and we use rubbing alcohol for that. Uh, that will keep it nice and pure. So we're gonna pour that so that it's at the fill line. This lovely mason jar tells me where the fill line is. Nice and full, looking lovely. And nice and tight. There's something else. We don't just set this one out. You can, but you're supposed to shake it twice a day, especially once right after you make it. Shake it nice, make it sure all the energy gets whirled around. And you're gonna do this when you wake up and you're gonna do it at moonrise so that it's got sun and moon energy with this. So we've done a great job today and hopefully you feel equipped to try some things at home. Uh, as a reminder, these are things that I made prior. These are what we made live today and we have Isis Healing Brew that you can use on your skin and in your bath to promote healing, natural body healing and Isis Magic. Um, and then we have Cauldron Brew, which is for special rituals and bringing in new seasons and just influencing you as a witch with herbs that you find powerful. You can't mess this up. So if you're worried about that, remember that you don't want your worrisome energy in what you're concocting. I even thought for a moment myself when I make things, was that supposed to be in there? If you're feeling the magic at that moment, it is supposed to be in there. And what your energy sets is very powerful. So I want to thank you for making the Isis potion with me today and for making cauldron brew with me today. Uh, feel free to sound off any questions in the comments, which brings me to something important. We will be announcing formally a session that we will be holding on Mondays, which will be free, a Q&A session with myself and the other Seaside Shadows guides and storytellers and historians. And every Monday, we'll be going live with you to answer your questions about the segments of the week. So every week we have Witchy Wednesdays, Spooky Sundays, and Cemetery Saturdays. So we have magic sessions, history sessions, scary sessions, but a lot of people have questions about what we've made or what we've told or they want more history. And this is a great time to come in and talk with all of us who will be producing the segments every week. You can send your questions in advance or you can just log on and send them at the time. If you send me a question today, for instance, and I don't get to answer it, be sure to come on Monday and you can talk with us and see us talking with you uh, back. So that's a new thing that we're going to be announcing uh, Mystical Mondays uh, coming soon. So be sure to tune in for those. And again, the Cemetery Saturdays and Spooky Story Sundays. Cemetery Saturdays are at four and Spooky Story Sundays are at eight. Uh, all these series are free. We do, however, have at the, at the top or in the description, however it looks on your screen, a little bit of information on each storyteller or historian or witch on how you can send a tip, uh, which is incredibly appreciated at this time that we can't run the events we normally do, but we're so glad to be coming to you with these segments. So if you are able, feel free to do so. Thank you for tuning in. Happy new moon blessed new moon and happy earth day. I hope that you get to do some planting and some healing and have a fabulous evening.